Hi all, hope you guys are doing well. And this is on popular demand that I'm coming up with uh, storage or sand zoning part 2. And in this I'll be covering an example with Cisco Switch. In my previous video, uh, whose link I have shared in the description, I have talked about the concepts of zoning, the basic definitions of zoning, and shared an example of brocade zoning. Uh, well, I've been getting a lot of mails that I should be covering uh, MDS zoning and since I don't have it currently in my environment, though I worked on it uh, for a while, uh, I'm sharing the steps and uh, I've been using command line to go through uh, Cisco zoning. So uh, here will be uh, your uh, Cisco zoning table basically. It is quite similar to general zoning process. Uh, in this uh, there are certain uh, differences uh, in what you can see in the table. Uh, each step has been explained in details by me in uh, coming uh, slides. I'll be talking about every step, how you do it, what command you use it and you know how you manage it. So uh, going forth, let's see uh, how step one is done. So basically your step one has to be whether your uh, you know WWNs are there on the switch or not. They will not be there if they have not been physically connected yet. So uh, in order to check that you can see your uh, WWN, you can use this command called shfloggy database in which all connected server HBA WW port numbers will be listed. And hence once it is confirmed, then we can proceed with zoning activity. If not, then you got to check the cable connectivity or check whether your ports are online or not. In case they are offline, you can just make them online with a no shutdown command. And uh, if uh, that is not the case, then definitely there is something to do with the cable physical connectivity, which you ne need to get your data center guys to sort it up. So once you have your WWN listed in your uh, switch database, what you can do is you can get into the switch configuration mode. Now remember without going into the switch configuration mode there is nothing about zoning that you can do. You can use below command config t which is configuration terminal configuration t you can use multiple such commands and it will uh, you know lead you to configuration terminal. And once you are in the config t your switch will be shown like switch name then your config mode and then uh, you know you can enter your commands. So once you're in the configuration mode, what you need to do is that you need to have a zone basically in which you are going to put your members. So we create a zone by this command called zone name and we give the name ABC. Uh, I haven't given any real world name because you know, then uh, there can be issues with the companies whose names they will be. And uh, you don't use vSAN1 ever. Uh, I'll tell you why at the end of the uh, video. So uh, we have vSAN 2. Uh, talking about vSAN, it is nothing but virtual SAN. It is a collection of ports from set of connected fiber channel switches that form a virtual fabric basically. Ports within a single switch can be partitioned into multiple vSANs despite sharing the hardware resource. Remember this. But if you are going to talk about members uh, a zone adding the zone into the zone set remember they have to be in the same vSAN for your connectivity to reflect on the host and array once you have created a zone your next step would be to add members to it now there are two ways you can do that one is that you directly give the port wwns as member command and put them in the current zone and the second step would be to create their alias names and then add those alias names into the zone. So now what you did was you gave switch name uh, like a zone name, zone name ABC vSAN2 and after that you will come in the mode that is something like switch name config zone. Anything before the hash is something that switch is going to get back to you with. Now what I have done is I have just given a command member pwwn the array wwn then member pwwn the host wwn and exited. So when I exit this will come out of the abc zone that we created. 
you cannot directly put member pwwn and add something unless you create a zone or you say that you are inside a zone with the previous command that we talked about now the other method that i talked about was by creating an alias name so what you can do is once you are in the configuration terminal or config mode you can give a command called fc alias name abc hpa 0 vsan 2 Remember that your zone, zone set and your alias that is created need to be in the same vSAN for this particular connectivity to work. Now, when you enter this FC alias name, it gets in, the switch will get into the config FC alias mode and with a hash in the end. Okay. So, uh, you add a member PWWN of uh, you know whatever HBA WWN you know in this particular FC alias and exit it once you have done it you put the command of zone name ABC as we talked like in the third step then you add member FC alias the name that you created above for the port WWN of the host in the first command similarly you can create FC alias of the array so uh, I have just, you know, uh, not given that command. It can be done similarly to above. FC alias name CKM00XX uh, 5G0V SAN2 then member PWWN 50 something 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 whatever your WWN for the array is and it will create the alias for the array as well. So once you get into the zone, you add the member FC aliases and you just exit it. Now your zone is ready. But how do we know that it is ready? Obviously you did not get any error, then you can say, oh yes, it is done. But I don't consider it to be a foolproof method. So what you can do is you can run the below command called show zone name ABC vSAN2. vSAN2 again, because you are using vSAN2. If you're using vSAN586, please use it. If you're using vSAN something else, please use that particular number here. It entirely depends on your infrastructure. And uh, so you can do show zone name, the name of the zone and vSAN. And you will see that your zone is existing or not. In case it is not, it will say that no such zone exists. So once you are done with uh, adding the members to the zone, now you need to add that zone to a zone set. Your zone set is uh, usually the active configuration, the configuration that has other zones as well that are working in that particular vSAN. So uh, you can give a zone set name, uh, say it was XYZ uh, and uh, again in the same vSAN. So switch name in the config mode, zone set name XYZ vSAN2. Then switch name, you get into the mode of config zone set once you give the above command and you can add member zone name. So if you have to add multiple zones to it, say you created host 1 and array zone, host 2 and array zone, host 3 and all and you have 4 zones now. So you can, once you get into the zone set mode, you can add member ABC, member ABC1, member ABC2, so on. And then you can exit that mode, obviously. Now, this is a very, very important step that you need to do that we did in Brocade also. You always have to activate the zone once you add zones to it. If you're not going to do that, remember, you will not see your uh, configuration working. You will not see uh, the connectivity between the host and array and they won't be able to see each other. So once you are done, use this command in the configuration mode, zone set activate name, the zone sets name actually there. So this is going to basically save the zone configuration that you just added to your zone set. And there you are, you're ready to see uh, that, uh, you know, your array uh, can now be configured with mapping, LUNs and everything. And you will be able to see your SAN on your host. You have created the virtual connectivity between the host and the array. 
now if you want to know uh, this was soft zoning now if you want to know what soft zoning is what hard zoning was and all you can just go back to my first video on zoning and uh, have a glimpse of it there and if you have any doubts you can obviously come back to me anytime now uh, related to zone uh, I'm giving you some more commands which are basically show commands that will help you to determine whether the steps that you have already performed are working fine or not in case they are not you can obviously redo them or troubleshoot them which is a wider wider topic and uh, troubleshooting is quite specific so i can't just put it in one video and tell you okay you know anything is there and you do this and it will be sorted you really need to go through the logs and uh, the kind of issue you're facing your infrastructure requirements so troubleshooting is something that comes with a lot of uh, experience uh, a lot of uh, you know working basically even if you don't have experience in 